What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today we've got another deck profile. This time we're hitting another update. I've kind of been going through a lot of the decks that I've been wanting to update for a while and this time I'm back on Zephra's. This is a very very cool deck and in fact uh, it's actually like one of like the only pendulum decks I really enjoy and especially now with the metal foes support I think Zephra's and metal foes potentially Zephra metal foes may be the only like uh, variations of pendulums I actually enjoy playing because um, like I'm not huge on the combo versions and I know metal foes can be comboed but like not always super poly stuff weird you can play weird variants whatever that's not what's important today we're looking at Zephra's uh, it's a really really cool pendulum deck that plays traps and I, and I really enjoy that because you know you guys know purple is my favorite color in this card game so uh, yeah this is my new updated list I did my first iteration of this not too long ago but I finally have a, an update because I feel a little bit more competent with the deck and uh, so hopefully this list is um, a little bit better uh, moving forward. So without further ado, let's start off with our Zephro package. Obviously, three is a frat. This is the best starter in the deck. You play like 10 copies of this in your deck. It's insane. Um, we have three copies of Zephro New. This card is like the main card that the deck revolves around. It's like literally every turn. Summon him, get a search. Potentially pop him on your opponent's turn, get another search. And just continue to like stockpile resources off of him. He's how why you're able to just like win grind games in the deck. And also 2600 booty makes him uh, actually kind of annoying to get around for certain decks. So Fraxy, pretty cool when it's summoned. It makes itself a tuner or actually any Zephra uh, you control a tuner. Which is pretty cool. So you can make the uh, Synchro 9 play. And we'll get to that combo later on. Because you can search any monster in the game in this deck I'm on two copies of Zephyr Thuban I'm not even going to lie to you I've been thinking about potentially playing a third copy of Zephyr Thuban just because it is another low scale because ideally what you want to open up in this deck is Zephrath and a low scale bare minimum that's what you want Zephrath low scale um you can't always do it but uh definitely I would consider potentially playing him at three to be able to do that or maybe play something else that can kind of help with that i before i was looking at like Satellar knight deneb because deneb could just search him um to get that scale but we do kind of use our normal summon a little bit more in this variant than the last one so you know there's that uh one copy is a fraxaton he's a high scale uh but he does like help you hit um set cards and then uh, zephyr wendy she helps you get stuff back from the extra deck to your hand to light to just keep the resources churning but two high scales low scales low scale can be a low scale so the idea here is a frath plus a low scale just keep that in mind that's why i would consider playing zephyr thuban at three uh, but i think for the time being i've done a good amount of test hands with this uh variant and uh, pretty consistently I'm, I'm finding that ratio pretty pretty well but that would be the one thing i would consider and i'll tell you what i would definitely drop for that going forward and then for the weird other like actual monsters we play one copy of gizmet kaku uh the supreme shining sky stag wow that's that's a lot of alliteration and then uh cyberstein so the, the really cool thing about this deck is it can search any monster via it's like cool little like archetype combo and so you're either going to be searching this guy to make yeah to make yourself a um calamities or you're going to be searching this guy to just summon out a berserkion Wait, not Berserkion. Uh, 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 what the heck? Why am I? What a Barkion. Jeez. Or Exterio. Not Barkion. Jesus Christmas. Exterio. Oh my God. I don't know why I blanked on that name. Uh, yes, it takes 5,000 life points, but whatever. Exterio is just like half the time in the right matchup. It's just going to win you the duel. If you can end on both these, which actually is legitimately possible, uh, you just like win the duel. Like Calamities plus Exterio. Like what, what deck could beat that? Um, so yeah. That's very, very nice. All right. And then that takes us to our uh, the rest of our monsters, which are just Hand Traps, Run 3 Gamma, and the Driver, and then obviously 3 Ash Blossom. Um, okay. So you guys know me. You guys have seen deck profiles from me. I don't like playing Gamma unless it actually has legitimate synergy with the archetype you're playing it in. Otherwise, um, I feel more comfortable siding it. Uh, but actually, in this deck, it works great. You have so many search spells and stuff you're activating while you have no monsters on the field that people want to ash it. Going second, they want to negate those cards because they just don't want you to get those resources. And that makes Gamma Live and actually uh, a pretty good card um, to either protect your plays as well as just stop your opponent um, going second. So very, very good card there. And then three Ash. One thing I would consider here is dropping Ash down to either two or even one. Um, so I think like if I ever decide that like I'm just not seeing enough low scales, I just want to definitely focus down on that. I would drop probably one Ash for that. But there's cool things like like I said, this deck can search any monster and maybe um, 
Maybe um, you don't have life points to do the Cyberstein play. Maybe um, you just you were able to get that draw, the, the combo set up, but maybe not with a level 9, so Calamity's play is not available. Sometimes I'm just like, let me throw an Ash on top and let me just add an Ash to whatever my board state is. And actually, that can get you there. So just an extra piece of disruption you can search, but you only need one copy of that to do that play. So right now I'm on three, but like I said, if, if I ever get shaky on consistency, uh, finding low scales and stuff, I would potentially drop that down for sure which then takes us to our final shenanigans we're on uh, not final shenanigans our spells i guess <laughs> we're on three oracle uh and one uh terraforming obviously this this searches up for cards it's four more copies of Zephrath, and this card is what allows you to do the search any monster in the game combo. Essentially what this says is if a Zephyr monster is used for a synchro summon while it's on the field, you get to stack any monster on top of your deck. Uh, so the idea is you just, like, you synchro into a, a synchro that's going to draw you a card, and then you make this chain link two, the synchro chain link one, you're going to stack, and then you're going to draw the card uh, off the top. So that totally works there not a problem and uh, it also like searches you any zephron activation so pretty insane card one of the best cards in the archetype for sure next up three providence this is another search card i mean this deck is just search 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 um yeah providence is insane it gets you oracle if you want it, it gets you every other card in the archetype if you want it as well as uh it's like bay links and grave it just says if a zephyr card is going to be destroyed banish this instead uh it's pretty cool uh, allowing your deck to grind and be annoying to break through defensively um and then one zephyr path this is also a card i would consider playing it too this card is just insane particularly right now we could end up in formats where it's not as good or even better than it is now because this card says essentially a floodgate that all you have to do is have zephyr scales that are one in seven to activate uh, and then while it's on the field neither player can special summon except from hand or extra deck which is a lot of summoning in the game but Imagine like the best decks in the game right now. I mean, Infernobles and Dragon Link are trying to make uh, Halky Fibrax. Well, Halky Fibrax can't resolve because it doesn't summon from hand, it doesn't summon from extra deck. Uh, Link Ross and Aurorodon cannot resolve because tokens don't come from your hand or your extra deck, so they just cannot summon tokens, period. Any tokens summoning card does not work under this. And like I sold for Infernoble Knights. So it's actually a pretty nasty floodgate, very much so like pigeonholes their plays down like a very direct path, which means you usually only need one other disruption aside from this card to like just like stop your opponent 100%, um, which is really nasty. So it's a very insane floodgate. And because it's like someone saying that's why I'd almost consider a second one. Like if the first one gets outed, you just can still find a second one and like win a duel. But I think for now, I think one copy is good for me. I haven't really found myself in that situation too often being like, Oh, man, I really wish I had that second path. <laughs> uh, but it's still been very good. And then the only other spell I play is Two Desires. I, I get it. This is, like, not the greatest card. Like, obviously, you still have one of, like, we have the Gizmet Kaku. You could hit the, the Driver. You could hit the... Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Cyberstein, right? To cut off certain plays. One of, like, Path as well. Um, but this deck has so many different avenues it can go down. Like, banish one or two of those, and the deck still functions. Like... And so it's it's kind of fine. Um, the one thing I will say is definitely the driver hurts a lot. If you banish the driver to just like have one or two gambas in hand, you're just like, oh, that sucks. But still, um, I live and die by this card. I think it's just too good. It just like baits in a gate every single time, or you're just going plus one, and it's just consistency. So um, for now, I'm gonna keep it, unless like for some reason I find or some not for some reason if somehow i find like a better option we'll look at this card again but i think for now two is fine i'm not like overly bricking on it like drawing into second desires and stuff with with two copies of it but uh, i think two is fine for now space is pretty tight in the main i'm trying to keep it 40 uh, for consistency reasons which then takes us to our traps is my favorite part of this deck the fact that it plays traps in general for the zephyr ones we're on three war one uh nine pillars and one zephyr divine strike uh, okay, so War, uh, I feel like fairly recently a lot of players have discovered that uh, Zephyr War has become better and better and better because it can work from hand. It's like usable going second. So it says like if you have two Zephyr scales up, you can um, like activate this from hand. So it just becomes like a dry deck from hand, which is actually pretty cool going second because a lot of people will like let you like 
set up scales and try to pen summon and then they try and disrupt you from there but they like do that and then you war them which baits in a gate and they're like oh shoot i don't have another disruption for him now he plays for free right so it's kind of cool like that a uh, very cool card and then also uh nine pillars is very good so these working uh, together so well because pillars like pops a yang zing card you control to do its negate and so like you pop a um a uh, Zephyr New that you have in your uh, on your field that you use to search this as a disruption in the first place. You pop it on your opponent's turn to, to negate them once, and then Zephyr New, because it was destroyed, will search you the war, and assuming you still have your scales up, this will just be a Dryden. So you got an Omni Gate and a Dryden just off of that one search, uh, which is really cool. Really, really like that, that stops a lot of plays in and of itself. Uh, and then the last card, obviously, Divine Strike, just another negate if you need it, if you can get it. Sometimes you can have all three in one turn, and uh, it's really good, really good. And the last uh, hand trap I play is Infinite Impermanence. Um, it's just good. Like, uh, I think, like, this and, and uh, Gamma are, like, the best hand traps in the game right now. Gamma just is the strongest interruption, but this is also, like, a pretty decent disruption that also doesn't trigger triple tactic talents. Uh, so, you know that's pretty good because that card is really scary <laughs> like all the time so yeah uh, so three of that three ash three gamma that's what i'm playing for the hand traps not an, an insane amount but enough because this deck is not particularly amazing going second so i wanted a little bit of mitigation to help us in game one if we uh, don't win the die roll so that is that now we're in the extra deck okay gravity controller um it's a pendulum deck i think almost every pendulum deck should be considering this card at least uh it's just cool because any monster you pen summon to the extra monster zone could just go into this and this can be really annoying for people to out uh one needle fiber this is for very specific plays we don't play any needle fiber combos or anything like that but it can be there for a very specific play that helps you play through like uh set up disruption even through disruption so we'll get to that in a little bit uh one copy of lambda this is another cool um card in this deck just because this deck can make this so easily it sets up down arrows so your pendulum summons can become bigger and bigger turn after turn and it makes it so if you had gamma turn one you did your combo oh you had two link like monsters link them into this and now your game is live for your opponent's turn you can also bluff so be careful definitely be like mindful of that you can bluff with this card to make this just to make your opponent think that you guaranteed have a gamma now your opponent's playing suboptimally to avoid the gamma and then you're just sitting there with like nothing in hand like you you have like a another providence in hand because you opened two and like they thought it was gamma the whole time it's kind of cool uh, one also the Earth Charmer. Another cool card, uh, just reborning stuff from the grave is honestly kind of cool. It floats, um, and uh, it's just, you know, it's a beater. You know, it's a beater that floats. It can also, like, reborn, get you link material, and uh, half the Zephyr package is Earth, so easy to make. Uh, IP Mascarena, again, like, opens up zones. Uh, generic link two, just to get the into the, just to get into her, just to say, like, okay, that's a disruption. If you just had bodies on the board, this could just be a disruption. Obviously, the unicorn to pair with that. Boral Sword to kill. I think Boral Sword is overall better than uh, Access Code when it comes to specifically just killing your opponent. Obviously, Access Code is better at clearing boards, uh, but this one just raw, like, just kill them get the like your your deck is great at popping stuff removing your opponent's threats not allowing them to get set up so i just wanted a card that once you are ready and have enough material like no questions asked you're getting the kill so that's it for the link monsters i do have two proxies in the extra which i hate but it is what it is this is a formula synchron and the reason i play this card is so that i can make it on my opponent's turn with the halky fibrax it's the only reason why i play halk in the first place is because if you have zephyr new on the field you could make this with halk because halk like can correctly summon this that'll draw you a card which is already just like cool that you get to draw a card and then it has the quick effect to quick synchro on your opponent's turn where this plus zephyr new is a level two plus a level six which gets you into level eight which would be baxia on your opponent's turn and baxia just says like on summon you get to like target cards your opponent controls and shuffle them into the deck equal to the number of worm monsters used for them so the uh, zephyr new would be one so you just get to target a card and shuffle it back into the deck which is pretty cool you're not really making him uh many other ways but um this is still a pretty cool interaction where it lets like you could still set up a disruption while playing through stuff i uh, just don't have the formula synchron but still a cool card still a cool like pairing of cards to keep in mind for the deck 
uh, one copy of Stardust Charge Warrior because sometimes you can make this but you can't get to the Crocosaur so you just make the six to get the draw and set up that search any monster play instead still works still really good and it can attack all special summon monsters right yeah all special summon monsters your opponent controls if they had multiple like I don't know I guess I like Salamangrate could have like two or three like weaker special summon monsters you're just like blah 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 and you force them through their bailinxes so there can be weird plays like that uh, and then for these, obviously the Crocosaur and the Calamities, the idea is you make Crocosaur, he'll be chain link one, your field spell will be chain link two, you, so you stack the Sky Stag, draw the Sky Stag off him, and then you can just summon him because you summoned him in the extra monster zone, and then you can overlay four Calamities. Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> and then we have Exterio, this is just for the Cyberstein play. And then for the last two cards, kind of another interesting pairing. I have, oh, oh, my camera's like being all jank again. What the heck's going on? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> we have uh, Dampier Vampire Sheridan, and we have uh, Metaphys Horus. This is a pretty cool synchro card as well. Uh, essentially what Horus says is on so so he's one of those synchros that when he's summoned he gets effects based on the kind of materials you use to make him so if he was made with just an effect monster i believe he just gets to like target a monster on the field and like negate it just negate its effects like permanently which is pretty cool uh, and also he has an effect where if he was made with a pendulum monster specifically you can uh i believe target a monster your opponent controls and take it till the end of the turn um, and then the, what's really cool is uh, Sheridan says uh, if you control a monster by your opponent, like that's owned by your opponent, you can use uh, a level 6 you control and your opponent's monsters as a level 6 automatically. Doesn't matter what their level was, doesn't matter if they had a level, as long as it was owned by your opponent, it can act as a level 6 just to make him. So you could like make this thing to steal an opponent's monster, then overlay into this guy because uh, uh, Horus is a level 6 as well. And then he just says, like, once per turn, you can attach material to, like, send a monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. And then if he send, if a monster is, your opponent controls is sent via card effect uh, while he's on the field, he can just, like, reborn that monster to your field. So, like, in that situation, by making one synchro, you got to steal an opponent's monster, uh, send an opponent's monster, and then reborn one to your field. So off of, like, just that one synchro, you end with Sheridan plus another monster that, like, you took from your opponent and your opponent lost two monsters from their field. So it's a pretty big like swing play. If you feel like you're safe and there's no more disruption, making this play will just probably win you the duel. Puts you a ton of damage on board, gives you a chance to like just wipe your opponent's board and uh, you know put some, beef, some beefy boys on the field at the same time. So pretty cool play, uh, just, I don't know. Uh, it's cool cards. Like this deck is pretty flexible with the extra deck. You have like the stuff that you need, and then obviously you have like the cool plays if you wanna play them, like the like uh, Formula Synchron, uh, Halky Fibrax, um, like Baxia play, as well as like that one, the Sheridan and the Metaphys Horus play. So uh, it's a really cool deck. And, and because it has the access to something insane, like searching any card, uh, any monster in the entire game, you have access to potentially play this this deck so many different ways. You can play other combo variants. I know there have been FTKs because this deck can search any monster in the game. Uh, it's up to you how you want to build it. This is how I've been building it, though. Uh, so I'm able to play some hand traps and go second while still being able to do some busted stuff like Exterio and Calamities while going first. So um that's gonna do it for me here guys thank you so much for watching as always subscribe to the channel if you have not yet um you know i've got more deck profiles coming especially once phantom rage drops i'm probably doing an opening for phantom rage which i've never done on the channel before uh so i'm gonna be opening a couple boxes of that and i'll hopefully get a ton of stuff that i'll be needing for multiple deck profiles because uh like just out of that one set even before like the 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 TCG exclusives are revealed and that new archetype and stuff. I already have like seven decks in that set that I wanna I wanna update um, or at least do a, a first profile for uh, from Phantom Rage. So very excited for that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe if you want to see more deck profiles from me in the future, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.